The entertainment capital of the world is Hollywood, California. We're fascinated by stories of people like you and I that were made rich by their work in movies and television. It might surprise you that many Hollywood stars have called Southern Indiana home, or still do today. Let's take a trip to where those stars have lived. The Ohio River town of VV, Indiana has not only been a movie location, but also the home of two Hollywood stars. Kat Von D, famous for her own TV show, LA Inc., and her own cosmetics line, lives here today. Wanting to raise her family away from the Hollywood lifestyle, they moved to the historic Schenck Mansion. By all accounts, she's been a great neighbor and loves it here. Actor and producer Kenneth Maynard was born at Vivi. While he might not be well known today, he was a huge star in westerns from the 1920s to the 1940s. He has his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Our next Hollywood star was a multi-talented actor, writer, director, acting coach, musician, and even a college professor. Born in Kentucky, he grew up at Corridon, Indiana. James Best had a prolific Hollywood career, starring in both movies and TV. In this photo, he's playing guitar with Andy Griffith. The he is most remembered is Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane on the Dukes of Hazard TV series. He played the character so well that it's hard to believe he was also a college professor. You can drive by his boyhood home in Corridon and snap a picture. It is clearly marked. And the next door neighbors clearly have a sense of humor. Even though he became a Hollywood star, he never forgot his roots in Indiana. From time to time, he would come home to visit, where everyone knew him as simply Jimmy. He was buried at Corridon at Cedar Hill Cemetery, a few blocks from where he grew up. James Best is buried next to his parents. He'll always be a hometown hero, a local boy that made it. For the longest time, I didn't know that our Hollywood star lived just down the road. In fact, just 20 minutes from my front door. Aaron Moran starred in not only the incredibly popular Happy Days, but in her own show, Joni Loves Chachi a spin-off of Happy Days. Before the days of lucrative TV contracts, actors didn't make much per episode. They made nothing on merchandise licensing fees or residuals when shows went into syndication. You could have the number one show in the country and the next year be broke. This is what happened to Aaron. With Hollywood work drying up, she and her husband cut their losses and moved to New Salisbury, Indiana, where her husband had family. They made their home here, in a mobile home park. When she felt up to it, she was often seen taking walks on this road. But Erin wasn't well. She had stage 4 cancer. It eventually took her life in 2017. As she was cremated, it's unclear where she is today. But for a few short years, a Hollywood star 
lived among us. One of the most famous TV moms in history was born here at Dale, Indiana. Actress and singer Florence Henderson is best remembered as Carol Brady from the Brady Bunch TV series. Her show business career spanned six decades, and as late as 2010, she was a contestant on Dancing with the Stars. While not buried here, the town created a monument to memorialize where she was born. She had very humble beginnings. Her father was a tobacco sharecropper. By age two, she knew 50 songs, which she would sing at grocery stores. This was to make extra money for the family during the Depression. Known as Florenzi when she was a kid, people in town still recall her singing as a little girl, way before she was famous. It's a perfect photo opportunity and a place to remember a Hollywood legend. Grandview, Indiana is a small town that borders the Ohio River. It's here that you'll find the classic Hollywood story where someone is born into poverty and rough conditions and makes it very big in the movies. This is the birthplace of Bill Peet. It's no exaggeration to say Bill made Disney what it is today. If you've ever seen Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Pinocchio, Fantasia, Cinderella, Peter Pan, Sleeping Beauty, 101 Dalmatians, or Dumbo. You have seen his incredible storytelling and animation. Born in this small Indiana town, Bill submitted his artwork to Walt Disney in California. He was asked to come out to see if he'd be a good fit. Little did he know that when he left Indiana, he'd spend the next 30 years creating the most beloved animated features of all time. Working beside Walt Disney himself, he created an amazing, magical world that never existed before. And it all started in southern Indiana. Continuing along the Ohio River, we arrive at Newburgh. It's the childhood home of actor Michael Rosenbaum. In the Smallville television series, he played Lex Luthor. He was in the film Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. In the subsequent Volume 3. As well as Urban Legend. In addition to his on-screen time, he's been a voice actor for the Justice League animated series. Not bad at all for a guy from Newburgh. Bedford, Indiana is known as the limestone capital of the world. It's the birthplace of three astronauts and has a variety of incredible caves. But it's also the boyhood home of a Hollywood star, Claude Akins. He was in 66 movies and nearly twice as many TV shows. He was in classics such as Here to Eternity with Burt Lancaster and Frank Sinatra. Rio Bravo with John Wayne and Dean Martin. And even Battle for the Planet of the Apes. But he is most remembered for his work in television such as The Rifleman. The Twilight Zone, Bonanza, Gunsmoke, and I Love Lucy. 
in the 1970s, he starred in the TV program Moving On as a truck driver and played a supporting role as Sheriff Lobo in BJ and the Bear. He then got his own series, The Misadventures of Sheriff Lobo. Ironically, his last television role was playing a character in the series, Erie, Indiana. The beautiful town of Vincennes, Indiana is the birthplace of the biggest Hollywood star Southern Indiana has ever known. Actor and comedian Red Skelton started out in vaudeville, then moved to radio. He then starred in scores of Hollywood movies. And eventually had his own TV program, The Red Skelton Show, where he invented all kinds of outrageous characters. He was also a prolific artist, creating hundreds of paintings. Most of them were clowns. At the height of his Hollywood career, he was making $2 million a year on The Prince alone. But of all the Southern Indiana stars, he's the only one with his own museum. Located on the Vincennes University campus, it's the only one I know of dedicated to comedy. Out of all the museums I've ever visited, this one is the most fun. It shows highlights of Red Skelton's career from his days in radio and movies, to his incredible run in television, including many of the costumes that he wore. It highlights the great preparation and drive he had to entertain. Even keeping a journal of jokes that he was always updating. And not once did he have an off-color joke. Families could tune in each week and laugh together at his outrageous comedy. Red Skelton took Southern Indiana silliness and brought it to the world, and that brought him many awards, including a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Even today, people greatly admire this hometown hero. In addition to the very big Hollywood stars, there are ones that made a smaller splash in the Hollywood pool. There was Patsy Mae Didamore of Gosport, whom played Spanky McFarland's sister in Our Gang. Jerron Criswell King of Huntingburg, that starred in horror movies from 1956 to 1965. He also appeared on many radio and TV programs as a psychic, going by the name the amazing Criswell. And finally, the interesting case of James Hubert Pierce, born at Freedom, Indiana. He was the fourth man to play Tarzan on the big screen in Tarzan and the Golden Lion. What's interesting about James is that he married Joan Burroughs, the daughter of the man that wrote Tarzan itself, famous author, Edgar Rice Burroughs. She went on to play Jane on both the big screen and in hundreds of radio programs that they did together. Both are buried at Forest Hill Cemetery at Shelbyville, Indiana. 
on his tombstone, it says Tarzan. And on hers, you guessed it, Jane. Hollywood stars can come from anywhere, from poverty, from riches, big cities and small. And sometimes, they come from this little place on the map called Southern Indiana. <laughs>